We are a methodology, and the method is the same, regardless if you're third grade or a 12th grade teacher. What changes is the speed with which it is taught and the level of the content. Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudois, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Director of Marketing. Our goal here is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. So, Julie, do you want me to start the podcast this time? You seem to be at a loss of words. You know, I'd be so grateful. I, you know, every time I sit in front of this mic and begin to think about what to say or how to begin, I look across the table at the man with the wonderful words, and I think, how can I top that? But I can't. So, yes. Yeah, well, you get paid to think, I get paid to talk. <laughs> well, today we have in the studio with us Linda Makotis. Of course, you can see that, Andrew, but for our listeners... I wanted to let you know that we have a guest on our podcast today. Linda McCotis is an implementation coach for our schools division. So thanks for coming down and being with us today, Linda. You're welcome. It's my pleasure, and I'm very happy to be here. So, Andrew, how long have you known Linda? When did you guys first meet? I don't know, Linda. When did we first meet? Do you remember? It was at a seminar in Chicago area. It was actually the weekend before Labor Day in August, and it was 1997 because my almost 29-year-old was eight. Wow. Well, see, I knew you'd have a better memory of that than I would. Well, it's quite if, memorable. If that was 1997, that was little over a year of me being into traveling and teaching seminars. I must have been so young and inexperienced and ignorant and incompetent, but I guess that didn't prevent you from getting excited about what you heard. That's absolutely right. One day, and many lives have changed, (laughs) one day of a workshop, and I haven't looked back since. Now, you are are a teacher, and you have your degree in special ed, and so you were working in the world of schools. Then you came into homeschooling. I did. And that's when I met you. And then your children gradually grew up, and you're right at the end of that homeschooling period, aren't you? I finished last May. May. So you yes. you and me, too. My youngest, Ellie, finished high school last May. So it's a weird feeling, isn't it, having all our kids basically grown up? It is. It's very unusual, but somehow... I found something to do with my time. You've been keeping very busy, very busy indeed. So tell our listeners basically what you do with IEW. You do conferences, you go to schools, you do all sorts of different types of services for schools. You do so much, I can't keep track of you. What I do for schools is I conduct workshops with schools conducting our teaching writing structure and style training the very one that I heard (laughs) 20 years ago and never thought I would ever do this ever in my life train teachers when I did not learn how to write myself in school and nor did I have a methods class on how to teach writing for my elementary ed degree and I did not have a methods course on how to remediate writing for my special education degree Yet somehow I was supposed to be able to do both, and your workshop has done just that. (laughs) And so now I have the pleasure and the honor, really, of training the teacher to transform the lives of other teachers and their students. That is awesome. How How many different schools would you say you've been to in the decade or so you've been doing this with us? I would say 100 or more. Wow, fantastic. Schools... Conducting the two-day training, probably 
close to 100, but conducting other one-hour workshops and things, it would put it over that. Then. So, Andrew, when I think about what Linda is doing, she's providing professional development for school teachers, I think 10 years ago, when we didn't really have much for school teachers in their unique setting. And over the years, we've developed more curricular materials for the teachers. So after they learn this teacher training course that you teach, and now Linda and her team teaches in these schools, they can actually open and go and teach with these materials. So because of that, and because of your joy and leadership, Linda, more and more schools are getting on board and getting excited. And Andrew, I'd like to have her speak just for a moment about the Berwyn study. Oh, yes, Berwyn. That was one of your babies, and it hatched, and it grew, and the results are astounding. Give us the details. The Berwyn North School District is a unique school district. They were looking for writing. I met the assistant superintendent at a conference in Illinois, and we conducted a study with the fourth and fifth grade teachers. We had a control group and then we had an IEW trained teacher for each of those grade levels. They chose excellent teachers for the control group as well as for the IEW trained teacher. And it was the first year for each of these teachers with IEW. The students had never had any IEW prior to that year. And they conducted a pretest that we did not create It was actually created by an independent organization that is a data collecting, data analyzing group called the ECRA group. And they wrote the test, they delivered the test, they, uh, then the teachers taught for a year. The uh, special, the, the IEW teachers taught our, from our classroom supplement lesson plans with fidelity every single week and conducted a writing lesson a week on average, sometimes two weeks or three. And then the control group used the curriculum that they would ordinarily use for writing. So they did teach writing as well with fidelity to the best of their ability also. At the end of the year, ECRA group sent a post test and one of these classrooms did narrative writing and one did informative writing. So we had both that were tested. And then they collected the test, they hired three teachers to score each test, and then sent us the results. So we were sitting on pins and needles, Mm -hmm. you know, waiting to see what the results would be. And they were astounding. Honestly, we we couldn't ask for better results. It, It blew me away. When this came into my office, I, I may have let out an audible whoop or something because it was so far beyond what I thought was possible in one school year. Yes. And what were those exact results? Well, the fourth grade classroom had a 23% growth in one year. 23%. Well, compared to... But yes, it's meaningless, right? Unless we know the control group, which was 2%. 2% growth. Equally excellent teachers, both teaching with fidelity. Yet one had 23% growth and the other had 2% growth. And I might want to add that that fourth grade teacher ended up being our teacher of the year that year. And in July, when we did the photo shoot with his students at his school, there was another teacher who observed the photo shoot. And she spoke with me. She said, I'm teaching summer school to these kids. And she said, to this group as well as others, and I can tell who are Mr. Bautista students Mm -hmm. because of their vocabulary ability, Mm -hmm. their sentence structure, the detail they give orally as well as in writing. And she was just thrilled as well. So the trickle down effect, you know, is immense. And then the fifth grade teacher, she had 28% growth in one year. And the control group again was 2% growth. Yes. Wow. And her classroom, interestingly, was an inclusion classroom, meaning that there are a great number of special education students in that room. Wow. Along with, 
you know, some typical fifth graders. So 28% growth in one year. And if I look at the data a little in a little more detail, what I see is the big shift is from the below proficient to the proficient. Huge, huge change, of course, and that's what schools are, are desperately looking for. And then an increase from almost nothing to highly proficient. So you mentioned that some of the students in Berwyn School District are English language learners. What percentage or how many or how did that play out? I mean, normally you would expect it would be harder to get dramatic results with ELL, ESL students. Well, in the case of Mr. Bautista's classroom in fourth grade, it was 100% English learners. Wow. He is the, at the time, he was the only fourth grade teacher with his endorsement for ELL education. And therefore, his class was 100% English learners. And the control group? Was a regular fourth grade classroom with a mixture of wow. students. So, so his English language learners outperformed their more native speaking peer group. That is in correct. That, in that district. Yes. That, that makes it even more impressive. And those are elements of the study that wouldn't necessarily be reflected in the statistics. Do you think that there are other school districts like Berwyn oh, that yes. are as needing and or, or as unaware of how they could make such significant progress? Oh, absolutely there are. They're everywhere. Right now, writing is pretty hot, mm-hmm. you know, in our country. Our state standards have changed, you know, every state has their own standards that they follow. But writing suddenly became in the forefront. And the assistant superintendent was looking for writing when she walked up to, you know, our booth at the conference. So she's just one of thousands upon thousands of school districts. Berwyn North is indicative of many across the country. Have you been back to Berwyn uh, since then, and have you continued working with the teachers there? Oh, I have, yes. The first year, we only trained 17 teachers, and then the next year, we trained a group of primary teachers, of about 15, 20 primary teachers, and then we trained another group of about 20, 25 or so grades, four through eight teachers. And we've done that for three years. Wow. And now it's a mandate. The superintendent has now mandated IEW across the district. So they're very pleased. Very, they're, very they're pleased. continuing to get the good results. We also do demonstration lessons in the classrooms yeah, and for tell them. Yeah, me, tell me, I think there's a menu of several different things that schools can choose from when they schedule uh, professional development. What are those things? Well, the first is the initial two-day training is what we do. We can do that live, and which is what I did in Berwyn. Mm -hmm. And then the other day is a demonstration day. And that's where an implementation coach goes into the classroom and conducts lessons for their teachers to observe, a group of teachers. And then we meet immediately afterwards to answer any questions, to clarify anything. Uh, And then oftentimes say, oh, that's how that works. Oh, now I get it. So I like to say the training kind of gives you the theory and the nuts and bolts of the method. But the demonstration day makes it come alive. Yes, yeah. And so that's the part where we refine, right? We fine tune. And then the next day that we do is the flip. I say, you know, turnabout's fair play. So the next time I sit in the back and I get to watch one teacher at a time teach a lesson. And and did you hear what I said? I said, I get to Uh watch a teacher. It is my favorite day of Uh all of the professional development days that we give because I get to see everything that I've poured in to these teachers Mm -hmm. come out in their students. And just to clarify, these observation days don't happen right after you've done a demonstration day. It would be a month or two later where they've had time to practice. Oh, yeah. Oftentimes, I will come in in October, November, and then I'll return to the school sometime January through March, Mm -hmm. even as late as May. I'll come back 
and then I'll, I'll be able to do that. Are the coaching. teachers nervous with you in the room? They are, yes. I tell <laughs> them that this is my favorite day, but it is more than likely their least favorite day, <laughs> and they agree. But in the end, it actually, it is the only professional development day where I have been asked, uh, when are you coming back? Mm-hmm. Because they realize the value of that one-on-one coaching opportunity that they don't always get. And that's what I like to call it, is a coaching opportunity. That's what the demonstration day is too. It's an opportunity for coaching. And that's exactly the way I like to look at it, is I come alongside you, you know, to mentor you and to coach you along and to help you become even more successful. And you know, teachers will do anything that it takes to help their students become successful. Mm -hmm. They'll do anything. And I tell them, well, I do too. Mm -hmm. Only you're my students. My students are adults. They're not children. So, So, Andrew, I wanted to just take a moment to interject the opportunities, the different ways school teachers can be trained. Many of these opportunities are through video training, through you teaching the teachers using our teaching, writing, structure, and style video well, course. And the, the video course is obviously a very economical, mm-hmm. it's a lower level of commitment of the school to get started. So smaller schools, schools on a tight budget, maybe uh, if you've got three teachers that are interested, you can't really bring in Linda to do a workshop for such a small number. It's not cost effective, but the video is. And once that gets rolling and they start to see it come alive, get get the excitement. We even have a student workshop as part of the teacher training course. Right, so she had mentioned that she goes in and teaches a group of students as a demonstration day. Well, that's also available on video for teachers called the Models for Imitation. One of the things that we can't ever replicate, I don't think, nope, it wouldn't be possible, is the observation day where Linda or someone on her team actually observes the students. That'd be hard to do that on video. (laughs) We could put spy cams in the class. (laughs) We're not quite ready to do that. No, but we we could perhaps someday do something like that, have have a live streaming video of a classroom and then have Linda or one of her team do give the same type of feedback they might. So, you know, technology makes things possible beyond the limitations of schedule and times and airplanes and costs and all that. So I want to go back to just the basic training because I'm I, I believe I'm talking to I'm talking to you listener now for a moment. You might be a homeschool mom, you might be a classroom teacher, you might be someone that knows a classroom teacher and you'd love to see IEW brought into their school. You heard these results from the Berwin study and wow, I'd really like to have Linda come and teach my school. Well, Linda's just one person. She's got two other implementation coaches on her team. She's actually the lead and trains other coaches so they can go out and do that. But that's still So we do like to recommend the videos. We do like to recommend schools doing the videos in groups. But we now have a structure and style writing workshop that we're doing three of these this summer. So we're providing these for teachers specifically. Right. Right. But teachers from any school, any district, if they can get there, we can welcome them. Yes, and we tried to choose places so that people would want to come and maybe do a vacation. So the Bahamas... (laughs) Hawaii. Well, let's be practical. Alaska in the summer. No, okay. Where are we doing these? We're conducting the Structure and Style Writing Workshop in Chicago. What a better place to be in July, <laughs> right? Right downtown. You know, no, we're actually in a suburb. Easy to get to. You don't have to, you know, maneuver the Chicago traffic. However, bring your family. Take the train. Um, the community is Elmhurst, Illinois. We'll be at Elmhurst College, and it is a train stop right into the city, 20-minute train ride in. It's uh, a lovely time of year. So we're there. Also, we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, another great vacation location, and it is easily accessible for other major cities that are all around it, too. So it's not far to go just about anywhere in that area from there. And the third is Philadelphia. Wow. All the history that's in Philadelphia, you know, that's another excellent family so vacation. If spot. I hear you right, you're suggesting that a teacher could come with their family, yes. their spouse and children could go off and have fun, and the teacher could sit with you 
and learn structure and, and style fun. and have fun. Okay. And have fun. Well, what sounds like sounds like a doable That's plan. That's right. So, Linda, what would you say are the top three reasons you would recommend a structure and style writing workshop, a live training course for the teachers that might be listening to this podcast? If you are interested in transforming the way that you teach writing in your classroom, that's number one, and are also interested in changing the attitude of your students and your own attitude about teaching writing, We conduct a workshop called Reaching the Reluctant Writer, and sometimes I think it should be called Reaching the Reluctant Writing Teacher. (laughs) That was me, although I don't think anyone would attend. But (laughs) that was me. So those are two. The other is if you'd like to pilot this. If you would like to just check us out for a year, we're not asking for a school-wide commitment. We're not asking for a district-wide decision. But if this is, if writing is on you know, the radar for your school or your district, this is an excellent opportunity for you to just check it out for a year. Ask if you can pilot it. That's really the key word is pilot. And bring a colleague or two in a different grade level, you know, from what you teach. So that if you all three are successful in three different grade levels, then there's really something to it, right? And so that's, those are the top three for me. The, the pilot idea reminds me of a kind of a a tragic but good for us kind of story I heard once uh, I met again a teacher that I had taught a few years previously uh, from a public school in Washington State and so I, I said well how's it going she goes great my kids are writing really well so well have you thought about you know trying to get it into the other classrooms in your school she goes no this is my secret weapon it makes me look so good <laughs> and I thought well that's not probably the best attitude, but I can understand it. She has a great attitude toward IEW. Yeah. <laughs> so, Linda, you mentioned to invite a colleague from a different grade level. Mm-hmm. Talk about the different grade levels that this Structure and Style Writing Workshop is appropriate for. We have two different workshops that we're running back-to-back in the same week in each city. The first two days uh, is for teachers in grades 3 through 12. And then the second workshop, the second two days, is for grades K, 1, and 2. We have to separate them. The materials are uniquely different. The way the method is taught is uniquely different. The speed with which it is taught is different in the primary grades. We also begin with pre-writing. And for us, pre-writing is not just penmanship. You know, it is, yes, penmanship, but it is also growing vocabulary, growing sentence structure. Some kindergartners come in not even speaking in complete sentences. So we need to start building that rich language in their brains. And because, and to quote you, which I do all the time, you can't get something out of the brain that isn't already in there. And so we spend a good portion of the beginning of the year in K-1-2 putting it all in there. And how do you do that, Linda? Oh, memorizing poetry. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I love this workshop. Actually, I love them both. But the primary teachers are so excited about what we teach and how we teach it to their young students. In fact, they say, finally, someone who understands what we do and the children we teach. And they're not expecting my kindergartner to be a fourth grader. And I agree. If Mrs. Ingham were still alive and able to hear us, or maybe she can anyway, uh, I think she would be very, very pleased to see her legacy of the blended sound site continuing in the primary classrooms that you're teaching in. Absolutely. And the quality of literature that we use is exceptional. Always one of her points, too. But I wonder how you'd answer this question, because I've been asked, how can you teach a grade four teacher and a high school teacher? Aren't those totally different? They have developmentally different students, yes. However, we are a methodology, and the method is the same regardless if you're a third grade or a 12th grade teacher. The method is identical. What changes is the speed with which it is taught and the content, the level of the content, and the words that you choose, you know, to teach it from. So you just, it's a method. What 
I hear sometimes after I conduct maybe a one hour workshop at a conference or something, I love your strategies. These are excellent strategies. And I kindly correct them. And I say, actually, we look at this as a methodology. We're not a strategy to pick and choose. We're actually a method on how to teach writing. And there are other things out there. Sure, none of them are a method. They tell you, the teacher, what you need to have in good writing, what makes excellent writing, and this is what you need to have in your student writing. Well, we can't dispute that. It's all true. However, they do not teach the teacher how to get those results. And that's where we are uniquely different from anything else that is out there. And I'm at a lot of conferences every year. And I can tell you, I scope out the other booths, I check out our competition, and quite frankly, there just isn't any. And we've been around a long time. The method has existed for over 80 years. And it's based on principles that are probably even older than that. That's so, correct. Yes. Going all the way back to Arizona. Well, I would finish up by sharing with you a story. I don't know. Maybe I've told this to you at some point in the past, but I think it encapsulates the essence of why bringing structure and style into the classroom is so powerful. As a teacher, I met very, very early in my time, probably around the same time I met you, she was teaching in a school in Spokane, and she came to me and she said, Mr. Puto, I wanted to share with you one of the things that one of my children said to me at the end of this last school year, not because I'm a great teacher, but because it points directly to what you taught me. And that is, the student said, Mrs. Idy, I've learned more from you this year in school than any other year in school ever. I believe it was sixth grade. And that was the seed of what got us talking and thinking about the fact that, yes, we teach writing. In conjunction to that, we help improve reading. In conjunction with that, we help improve listening and speaking. And so we have all of those. But Mrs. Idy, Shirley Idy, maybe she's even listening to the podcast now, I don't know. She was the one that perceived that what that student was really saying is, you taught me how to think better. And oh, I thank yes. you for that. Oh, yes, absolutely, that is true. Writing is thinking, is it not? In order to write, you have to stop and think. And as you've said before, that is by far the greatest byproduct of our writing method, is thinking. Well, we will keep on doing what we're doing, won't we? We will. Come hell or high water. <laughs> I, I love my job. I love what I do. I really do. Transforming lives. You know, I have said, if you can flip the switch and suddenly change an attitude toward writing, be it a struggling learner or an average student or a high student, and suddenly that attitude changes about writing, you can do anything. You can do anything as long as you can change the attitude. And they think they can do it. Therefore, the attitude changes, and therefore they can, and they will. If they think they can, they will, right? And if they think they can't, they won't. But it's our job to demonstrate to them that they can, and then they will. Well, let me just wrap up this podcast by encouraging you, our listeners, to go ahead and check out our school's division. IEW is not just for homeschoolers anymore. It actually never was just for homeschoolers. It actually started in the classroom all those many years ago before Andrew brought it to the United States, this writing method. But if you are interested in visiting Chicago, visiting Charlotte, visiting Philadelphia, check out IEWschools.com slash seminars. And if you want to get in touch with Linda Makotis and seeing if she can come to your school, go ahead and call us at our customer service line and we'll put you in touch with our educational consultant and our educational consultant team is the one that does the booking for these professional developments that Linda does. She and her team. Linda, can you just, I, we didn't talk at all about Sharon, who's conducting one of these workshops. Could you just speak for a moment about that? And we'll close with a shout out to Sharon Ashford, our friend Sharon. Sharon has a master's degree in education. She is 
specializes in the higher grades. She's very good with your middle school and high school students, although right now she's working in a preschool kindergarten. So she <laughs> can do it all. Uh, she's vibrant. She's excited about the method. Uh, she's knowledgeable. And actually, I'm going to be with her. In fact, she's going to be conducting the workshop. I'm just going to be there as, you know, uh, a support as we go through our regional workshop or our structure and style writing workshop together. But she, she is really fun, and you will enjoy your time, you know, well spent with her. Very, very knowledgeable. She's been doing this as long as I have, if not longer. So if you're listening, Sharon, hi. Hope you're having a great day, and we look forward to seeing you in Philadelphia. Yes, and our other implementation coach is Karen, and Karen will be attending some of these as well. Okay. So she'll be there too, our whole team. Our whole team, that's right. That's great. Thanks for being here, Linda. You're welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, you can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or Stitcher, or just visit us each week at IEW.com slash podcast. Until then, on behalf of Andrew Poudois and the team at IEW, I thank you for the privilege of allowing us to partner with you on this educational journey toward better listening, speaking, reading, writing, and thinking.